Hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to load seismic data into Open Detect. The first thing, if you're especially if you are in the Evolve program for 2021, you will be given a Dropbox link with all the data that you're going to need um, for this up for this data loading. So I ask to please go to your Dropbox link and please download each individual file um, individually. Do not download the whole folder because we usually have issues because of how big the file is and the zip file crashes so you end up losing track of each specific file um, so it's just better to just download one by one. Then we're going to open our Segway viewer. Um, if you don't have one we'll check later how you can still see this but if you have one open your Segway viewer and take a look at the Segway file that you have. Um, it's going to tell you the, the the bits for the inlines, cross lines, and X and Y. Please take a screenshot of this because usually it's reading the file, so you want to close the file while it's being read by Open Detect. So we open Open Detect, and if this is the first time that you open Open Detect, then it's going to ask you for a data root directory. If, if this is the first time you open open the tech and it asks you for a data, data root directory, just select a folder somewhere, as I'm about to show you. If you have opened it before and you want to select a new data root folder, you click up here to the left, how I'm currently showing you. So you click here to find where you want to put your folder. I usually go to my main folder to keep everything together. And this data root folder, of course, I'm calling it um, Open the Tech Root Directory, um, so that I know exactly what this folder is. So I go ahead and click OK. Now I know where my directory is, and now we click over here to import import a survey. This is the bounding box of our area. So we select our name. In this case, Matagorda Island. Just put a one and we decide to go ahead and scan the Segway file. And we also want to make sure that it's in time, the data that we have is in time. If you ever get this message, just click close, um, click on the, on the Segway that's already in the folder that we put. So, as I said before, we want to move all the data from the Dropbox into the folder that we created our directory just to make this um, easier to track. Once we've done this, we are going to have select the seg Y and now we're in the setup the survey. The important part here is to check the inlines and cross lines. We are going to need the two images that are also part of the Dropbox folder. Um, in order to do this setup correctly. So the main things we're looking at in this screen is going to be the inline range, cross line range, x coordinate and y coordinate. From the our side y viewer we can see that the bit here is 17. So we go ahead and select 17 and as you can see as it's about to load, see now we have a straight line because it study the found the end lines we select bit 25 for the cross lines and now we have a rectangle as expected and the numbers showing open detect match the numbers that we have in the image that was part of our Dropbox folder so we know it's correct we do see that there is a discrepancy um, for the cross lines so open detect only loads a thousand lines of data so we got to click um, the button you just click to look at it 100% of the data and now you're going to see that the numbers do match for the cross line range. If we click on the little um, magnifying glass we actually get our very own open detect segway viewer. So if you don't have one this is the part where you're able to go inside and take a look at the data. So just like in the head in the segway reader the beats match up, being 17 for the inline and 25 for the cross line, as I'm highlighting over here. If we were to, we can also 
go down and look at the specific bit size, in this case 17, and we see that it's the numbers that we would expect. If we click here, we have a 2D viewer of the seg Y, and this is a good way to know that our file is not corrupted. At the very least, there's, there is seismic data inside this file, so there should not be anything wrong with the viewer. Again, we can check the corners that do match with some of the corners that were provided to us. Um, if not all the corners are the same, don't worry because those are going to be used um, more later. But they do fall in normal range. When we click continue, now we go into the details of the segway of, of the survey setup. In this case, we don't want to click scan because that's what we already did and that's what we got the numbers we currently have. So we need to make sure that everything is correct even though it did scan the same Y because there's a lot of errors that can occur. In this case, our inline range and cross line range is great. We do see the increment for them is two. The C range is also correct. It goes from zero to around eight seconds and the increment for this is always four four milliseconds. Um, as you can see from the other image, we have it up to eight, and that would be eight seconds. So we need to make sure that we have um, eight, and here we need to select now the coordinate system. And this coordinate system, um, coordinate reference system, is also an image or a text file that was is part of the Dropbox. Um, in this case, we need to select the actual coordinate reference system, and so you can see I had it here in my email that it was um, Texas Nat 27 um, South Central Texas. I select that and continue. Then we need to make sure the coordinates are. This is the three numbers that are in our uh, image to the left. In this case, we have to open it up to actually be able to look at the x and y. Do not be confused by this. So now we need to check the numbers that are not correct. As you can see from this line, only the decimal points are different. Um, but for a couple of the other ones, there's more than just the decimal points that need to be changed. Make sure you take your time. This video is sped up. Um, you need to take your time to make sure that each of these numbers is correct and double check it. If not, your data loading will be wrong. You're allowed to zoom in to make it easier on you. Um, we click apply and then we click OK. And now we have our survey set up. And if you look here, we see um, the details, even the bin size is correct. So we know that we are on the right track. We're going to click, go ahead and click OK. And now we'll open the text opens up. Now this is our bounding box of our survey area. If we try and add uh, data by going right click add default data, it's going to tell us, hey, there's no data here, there's no survey. Again, if the message pops up, just close it. And we went ahead and decided, yes, we want to load some data. It's going to open the file explorer and we're going to go ahead and find our site Y that we were using before. Um, for this, we just keep everything default. If you know the segway revision from the header file, go ahead and select it. If not, just select read it from the header. Um, here's where we need to again look at the the beat value for the inline and the cross line. Again, this is where the, it gets a mistake, so we have to go ahead and click select 17 and 25. Um, the coordinates are correct. We click here to load it and name it. In this case, uh, just go again with Metacorda Island. This is the cube. And we go ahead and click go. And this step is going to take a while. So you just let it just wait for it. This is sped up again. And we see that it was successful. And all the parameters that we selected and we saw from the images seem to be correct. So we're on the right track. Um, we go ahead and we select it and click OK. Now it's loading the data this will take a little bit um, it's going to tell you that the colors are not selected just go get ahead with the default colors and we can zoom in and take a look at our data this will be an inline um, just to make sure we also go ahead and add a uh, cross line to take a look at it 
And again, that seems correct. You might see some empty spaces, that is fine. And the best way to know if it's correct is at a C size. And now you're gonna have a perfect map view of your scientific data. And this should reflect the same um, look that you had in the PDF that was sent to you. If we go ahead and select view north up, we take have a perfect map view of our data, which is completely defined in this box. Uh, we can go ahead and save our session. This saves our inlines, cross lines, and basically our view of what's going on. It's always good to save those. Um, we also want to do, if we go to here, we can make sure that everything is correct. And you can click here to download your, to download the survey and data and your session and then upload and this can be how you send it over to your teammates. What we have here is the preloading of the seismic. Preloading is very useful because it will save you a lot of rendering time. As you saw when we were loading in lens crunch lines and C slices, it was taking a lot of time to show it to us. If we preload the data, this will just be saved in the computer. This is the equivalent of breaking a volume, I believe, in Kingdom. And um, preloading to RAM in Betrayal. So we go ahead and we gotta have a lot of memory in our computer in order to be able to do this. In my case, I download a lot of data, so I don't have enough space. But go ahead and select uh, the biggest amount that you're capable of, um, or automatic. I would recommend um, 16. Up to this is up to you, and it's just whatever it's actually capable of working on your laptop efficiently. Do not fill your whole laptop's hard drive with a preloaded seismic because you're still going to run attributes but running it enough that you have still good quality data to look at the very least 8-bit is still good enough um, to work with but you will need to preload the data in order to do interpretation and tracking and that will be all and thank you very much